I'm a civil engineer, but I'm also a humanitarian. I love civil engineering. I love the, the technical application of, uh, of science and maths to solve real world problems. But the humanitarian aspect is then, is then taking that technical application and just solving problems that have an impact on people's lives. So the things that I love about civil engineering that I didn't know about until I joined the industry was the places it can take you. I volunteer as a search and rescue engineer with a search and rescue charity called SARAID and I didn't know when I had started uh, working that um, you know, my love of maths and physics at school and application to engineering would have me crawling around collapsed buildings looking for, for people trapped in disasters in the UK and, and overseas. It's not really a civil engineering project, but um, my answer, I think, would be the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. Um, I wasn't actually working at that point, I was still studying, um, but it had a real impression on me, the scale um, of that particular disaster and the effect that disasters can have on people. Um, and since then, it's really been a motivation to, to apply engineering um, and the understanding of maths and physics to solve some of those world, those real world problems and alleviate some of the impacts of disasters around the world. Well, I would say, um, speaking in public, um, before I started working, I was very, um, very shy to speak to people. Um, but engineering really, really thrusts you into the limelight in terms of speaking to clients, speaking to contractors, speaking to other people on the project. It's a constant negotiation and it's more than just technical, it's balancing the people skills um, that, that's necessary to get projects realised. Um, and through doing that repeatedly and constantly throughout my job, then, you know, I think I've faced my fear of, of not being able to speak in front of people and I, I feel like it comes from because of